Martin's best friend and a number one heir. Thank, Thank you, buddy. man's best friend. Welcome to New York. Thank you for welcoming here. Welcoming, welcoming me here. here. I actually got here before you did, Junior. That is true. You got off the plane first. That is correct. Did you guys enjoy your exit row seating? Thank you, Junior, for doing Thank that you, for Junior. us. Thank you, Junior. Awesome. Better walk away to go. Me. Did the you look jury eight? Women alone. Concentrate on the show. Did you look jury eight in exit row seating? <laughs> mm-hmm. I uh, appreciate you putting me in an exit row. Junior always takes care of us, makes reservations early. Now I'm going to complain. Because that's what he does best. I because know. that's what I do that's best. That's all he does. I was in the, you know, there's two exit rows, one right in front of the other one, and uh, I was in the, the front one, which the one that doesn't recline, mm-hmm. and man, I could not get comfortable. It was unbelievable. I kept having head bob when I would nod I off. I I suffered I horribly that. from I got plain crick neck. neck. <laughs> I got plain neck, something fierce. You know, that's interesting because my seat reclined, but I didn't use it. I should be in. I should be in your seat. Oh man, you should have switched with me. But I was able to wedge my head between the side of the headrest and the window, so I, my head kind of was leaned back and it was held in place, so I didn't get the head bob. Problem with that is, you know, those planes are designed to be able to have a lot of movement to them, and you can just get your head squished that way, <laughs> like uh, one little jolt of the plane and all of a sudden your head's in a vice. Okay, so you would rather, just so I know, yeah. to book going forward, you would rather be in a normal row with a reclined seat than no recline but extra leg room. That's a tough one, pal. I think I'll take the exit seat with no recline. I'll just live with plain neck. Okay. Yeah. Now, I was. Uh, it was nice because I was in the exit row, had tons of leg room, and nobody in the middle seat. Yeah, I had that too. Yep. And then on the other side, on the aisle, was a uh, a hot blonde girl who was all nice and prettified and, you know, took good care of herself. You can tell she's well-groomed down there, <laughs> all that. But she had the libido killer of plowing through Christian literature. So <laughs> she, was work- well, she was just working in her Christian workbook and, you know, and doing a lot of exercises and her doing some spiritual work and... I wish she would have witnessed to you. What was uh, what was wrong with that is it, it ruined the fantasy that I had a chance. Not that I had a chance anyway, but it just mm-hmm. kind of really closed the door on it. Mm-hmm. So, but she was very nice, and and the the flight here was fine. Now I d- need to give Giorgio an award. Greatest because, traveler ever. No. You are the greatest small talk magnet I've ever seen. <laughs> because as, because people look at me as a friendly face and they want to talk to me. As we were leaving um, LaGuardia and waiting, we were in the at the cab stand in line. You got targeted by this man for generic sports talk. It wasn't that generic. It was oh, yes, so it was. generic. Junior and I were standing in front of you guys, and we were just uh, all full of eye rolls and held in giggles and. Y'all were talking, y'all were bonding over your hometown of, of Chicago. You both he was were from born Chicago. There. You both were born there. I was not born there. And uh, so you'll get you'll get talking about Chicago, and then mm-hmm. he started in on Romo. And his okay, op- stop. He had a he had an interesting thing when he said I would take Romo over Cutler, and I said hmm, interesting. I didn't know most Bears fans. You felt that were way. not interested in I that was too. comment. There was no, no way, no way. I was too. I don't mind talking to people. You guys don't like talking to people. <laughs> oh, he was so generic though. Especially when he said, "Yeah, I'll take Romo over Cutler," because you know what, Romo at least gets you to the playoffs. Yeah, now he'll, he's a little off there. Now he'll fall apart in the fourth quarter once he gets there, but he'll get you to the playoffs. That is so generic and so wrong. Yes, that was wrong. But what he originally said, I would take Romo over Cutler. I thought that was an interesting sports conversation. No, you did. That not. I was willing to have with him. It was a horrible and then when sports he said, conversation. And then after he said that, I was like, do I correct him? And I just went, okay. Then I went into the mode of I'm just going to listen and write it out. And I just agreed with everything he said. You also had the moment where you I had you, some audio of this too. You were rolling on this. Yeah, that's an invasion my, of my privacy. <laughs> yes, it was. Well, I got to justify this new purchase. Where is my dang monkey? Bill? You also had a moment where you he started rolling because you brought up that you used to live in Wheaton, <laughs> and 
Gordon looks at me. He goes, "There it is." He brings up Wheaton <laughs> yeah, well, every something every I had in common with the guy. He was from Chicago. And then I do in conversation. And then I said, "Wait." Next out of his mouth is going to be, yeah, and I played against Chuck Long. <laughs> but you never said no, that. No, I wasn't going to say that. All right, let's see if we so can get this know if that's uh, accurate. <laughs> pulled up here somewhere. What do you think over here, Junior? Can you see uh, what he's playing with? iPod. That's got to Look one right. that says Mama yeah. Bear. All right, let's see if we can get any of this on, uh, on sports. You hear anything? That machine no. has failed that you just well, bought. I got a brand new machine because those guys stole my stoley thing. I yeah. hear something. Is that the one that's going into right there? Uh, right here. Yeah. Mm. Well, I can hear you. I can hear you you're talking way back there in the background. Turn up your volume on your. I'm up all mama. the way, my friend. Oh. There you are, living in Chicago now, huh? Huh? Well, I'm taking in the shorts for being friendly. Do I get? What do you want me to do? Just ignore him? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. They have good offense now. Yeah. So you can hear with y'all your, y'all, y'all. Yeah. It's a fun sports conversation. <laughs> no, I wish you could hear it. Anyway, you can't. But uh, And then we get in the cab, and uh, you had to sit up front, right? Yes, pinned against the dash. <laughs> pinned against the dash. I thought I'd have more room up there. It doesn't go backwards. And, uh, <laughs> and seat, you were up yeah. there, and you were in generic talk up there. It wasn't generic talk. I asked him things about, like, where was Shea Stadium and things like that. He didn't want to talk to you. Yes, he did. He liked me. No, he didn't want to talk to you. He didn't like you. you guys. He thought you guys were aloof because you weren't talking to him. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and then there's got to be an award that goes to Norm. He gets the award for beating down people who don't want to talk to him. <laughs> we... <laughs> On the way home from dinner last night, and we're going to tell some uh, travel stories and stuff at 8.15 today. Maybe. Right? Or maybe. Uh, our, we had our big team dinner last night. And on the way back, Giorgio and I ride with Norm. And Norm sits up front with the cabbie. And he starts trying to talk to this guy who had very little command of the English language. Either that or he was just rude to Norm. He didn't want to talk to Norm. Because Norm was trying to do sports humor with him. Garbage humor. Garbage humor. Norm goes up. <laughs> Look at that right there. Is there something a little bit funny about a garbage truck that on the side of it says, Don't litter. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets no, no really. response from this cab driver. <laughs> Those guys could never do a show together. They, no, they yeah. had zero radio chemistry. And then it was weird as they went on. They started like when they would talk to each other, they like lean in and kind of yeah. whisper to each other, like there they were a, in on something. Really? But yeah. Yes. This is really strange. George and I were in the back and was like, man, we're witnessing a drug deal right now because <laughs> Norm would lean in real close to him and talk into his ear, and then the guy would lean back into Norm and say something. I tell you, I can't hear you. <laughs> and his name was Muhammad. Bin Laden or something. I didn't catch his name. All right, well, we'll have to uh, tell a couple more stories from the team dinner last night, which was a lot of fun. Norm.